Laureen Ron, age 14, lived with her mother Judith in Manchester, New Hampshire and disappeared on April 26, 1980. Laureen was on a long-awaited spring break. The night of her disappearance, her mother was with her boyfriend, so as most teenagers do, Laureen invited a couple of friends over. Everyone was having a good time and drinking beer and wine. Later that night, they heard some type of commotion outside the apartment in the hallway, and the male friend thought it was Laureen's mother coming home, so he decided to leave as he was not supposed to come over to the apartment. Turns out it was not her mother. Laureen's other female friend stayed the night. Later that night, Judith returned home from her date and had noticed that the hallway to the apartment was dark. Thinking that was odd, she checked the light bulbs and saw that they had been unscrewed. Why would someone unscrew the light bulbs? She continued and entered the apartment, briefly looked into her daughter's bedroom and saw a figure on the bed, so she assumed that her daughter was there asleep. The next morning, her mother saw Laureen's friend in the house, but did not see Laureen. She asked, where's Laureen? The friend said the last time she saw her was when she was sleeping on the couch the night before. Laureen's mother looked around the apartment and found her clothing and new shoes in the living room. Laureen was not in the apartment, but the back door was open. Judith reported Laureen as a missing person with the police. The police did not share many details of the case and failed to have any solid leads on who abducted Laureen. After Laureen's di disappearance, for months Judith would receive phone calls, but no one ever spoke. Hello? Who's there? Why do you keep calling and not saying anything? Laureen, is that you, honey? Please say something. I can help you. Never an answer. After receiving a couple phone bills, it was found that a few of those phone calls were placed from California and charged to her phone bill. The calls were from different hotels where the police said one of them was actually used for the filming of child pornography, but the police could not link the filmmaker to Laureen. A year or so later, there were reported sightings of Laureen, but no solid confirmation. For years, Judith continued to receive phone calls and more frequently during Christmas time, but again, no one ever spoke even after Judith's continuous prompting of questions. Eventually, Judith moved on with life. She changed her phone number, had a new man in her life, ultimately remarried, and moved to Florida. Judith no longer received those anonymous silent phone calls. Judith truly believes those calls were from her daughter. Noreen's case was never solved.